Well, hello. All right. It's been a week since install. Um, so first, the good news. Mechanically, uh, it's been fantastic. The engine seems to take it no problem. Um, I did take it to the dealership and get reflashed with the latest stock tune. Um, still working on getting the full dial tune, uh, but just did data logging, and it seems like it's completely within the margins, not running lean, no knock, no nothing. Uh, now, if you hear that background noise, a little whining, uh, one of the parts that's been a challenge is working out a bit of a leak. Uh, so here, let me, f I will flip things around and show you what's going on. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about the oil cooler and the intercooler and stuff, so I'll go a little more into that. All right, so this hose right here, this fitting behind the oil cooler lines to the to the intercooler, um, seems to have been the primary source of a very slow leak. Um, I managed to slip the hose off, sand uh, some roughness that was on the bump there, put it back on and tighten it. So I've got the car partially turned on. So this is the water pump for the intercooler. So that's actually on and under pressure right now. So I'm trying to verify if I fixed the leak. Now, I've gotten various different questions and comments about the oil cooler. Uh, one thing that maybe wasn't obvious immediately is that we actually have a solid metal bracket tied into the mounting point of the intercooler and to the oil cooler. And then the bolts that are anchoring it to the plastic, we drilled right through and then there's a washer on the other side. So it's not just a, a screw into the plastic, but holds a lot of force. So between this solid metal bracket and these two, it doesn't move at all. I mean, I'm wiggling as hard as I can and it doesn't budge. So I'm actually feeling really, really good about how solid that is. Now, the other thing that isn't really obvious most of the time is how big that intercooler is. You can see it goes the full width of the car um, and it's tucked pretty far back. So uh, when it's parked and the bumper is on, uh, you can't really tell a whole lot about the intercooler. I've gotten people asking, try to get an angle with the intercooler. Um, I'll try to do a better job, but it's pretty hard because it's pretty tucked in there. Um, obviously, the oil cooler is more visible. The other thing to call out is there is space here, um, and we felt like that was a good idea uh, just to really maximize heat dissipation. So I, I really actually think this is a, a solid setup, um, as much as maybe <laughs> at first glance it looked like you didn't see this black bracket. That changes everything. Now, the other thing to point out is, as you can see, this was solid. So we cut out, not only did we shave this to fit the oil cooler, but I went ahead and ground this off just to try to maximize airflow in. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's still intact. Um, we took out some vertical ones, um, but this is just, I, I thought, a, a nice way to kind of tuck it in. Uh, still have the bumper there and look almost stock, but allow a lot more airflow um, over the oil cooler and the intercooler. So then I'll show you, and I'll move this bucket out of the way, my, my high-tech testing measuring for, for leaks, and I'll give you a view from underneath. All right, so here's a view from underneath. There's the intercooler, the oil lines coming back, uh, they kind of nicely frame the oil pan. Uh, there's the adapter plate. So again, I just used a kit that was actually made for uh, Miata, ND Miata, since it's a Skyactiv motor. Um, all of the Skyactivs, uh, to my knowledge, use the exact same so I probably come back to it being on and idling just to show it basically sounds stock at idle. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like it actually idles smoother than it did before, if that's possible. Um, obviously the, the in-gen colder intake's working fine. Um, I've got a lot of questions about how different does it feel. Uh, completely different. I Words can't describe. Um, I, mean, I still haven't pushed it on track yet. The tune still isn't dialed in. Uh, but it feels like it's been transformed. It feels like I added two cylinders. Um, it's instant. It's effortless. Um, yeah, I, I am ecstatic uh, and can't wait to get out on the track, get it fully dialed uh, and tuned in. Going to try and go after the battery. Still haven't hooked up the gauges, but leaks and kind of primary stuff I'm trying to complete first. Uh, yeah, so all, all in all, it's just cannot say enough good things about BT Racing, uh, the Skyactiv, you know, Mazda Supercharger kit. It's really well done, really well done. Uh, huge amount of power, less than 6 PSI. Should be able to just daily this all day long with uh, way beyond what it was stock. All right, and the latest addition today, a little teeny tiny, high cranking, 
880 cranking amps, but only six pounds. So this battery just saved me about 30 pounds. And then I've got this little battery tracker so I can actually see on my phone via Bluetooth exactly what the state of my battery charge is. It'll even warn me if it gets past one threshold and then it'll really alarm if it gets low enough that I might not be able to start the car. So nice addition. Already tested it. Cranks up faster than the giant 40 pound stock battery. So psyched.